I'm Shauna. And I'm Martha. And this is Murder in the Mountains. We're coming at you from Appalachia. <laughs> Live worldwide. So we're so glad to see you for episode three of Roger Keith Coleman. And first we wanted to show you, I think everybody's getting ready for Christmas gifts. A few of our Christmas gifts we have for you. The Grundy Courthouse ornament. And the jail is back here somewhere, which is our favorite part, right? It is. It was back here. Yes. It's not really shown here, but these are great ornaments where they could prop on a plate stand. If you are so interested, let us know. We also have Grundy Courthouse charms. And yes. Shauna is wearing a bracelet. Look how cute. Oops, it's not turning around. And this one was made, you can have a necklace or bracelet or... This one was made into a bookmark, which reminds me of the public library. Oh, it does. It's kind of a tie-in. And does. then we have this other charm of the old Grundy Baptist Church, which sadly burned down, but it this did. is the old structure. And I just so. took a little piece of suede, and um, you can buy these in packs of all different colors. And you just wrap around your arm, and... I helped her, though. She did. It's a two-person job. It is, it is. It's, it's, you know, you need a little bit of help when you do it. Yeah. But isn't that really cute? It is I just cute. love it. So if you guys love are it, interested, we can ship worldwide. That's right. Or nationwide. <laughs> nationwide, probably. probably. nationwide. For a couple of extra bucks. Yes. But, but um, let us know. You know what? How much are these? Oh, they are $15. And how much is the Christmas tree? And the Christmas ornament is $25, because it's very thick and heavy. It is. And they're handmade. Yes. Handmade, so we'd love for you all to have one on your tree. Yes, we would. So, we need to get into it. Cheer. Yes. Oh, we need to cheer. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> cheer again. Cheer. Yes. Mm. Here we go. Okay. So, two-second recap. Um, Roger Keith Coleman has been convicted of the murder of um, Wanda Sue McCoy, and... Um, we're going to go into the trial process. And um, spoiler alert, I just gave it away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because actually, we were going to talk about the trial before I told you what happened. Oh, gosh. Um, well, well, it's, it's probably okay. everyone pretty, pretty much assumed. I think, yeah. yeah. I think everybody already right. knows the um, outcome. But um, the trial was very quick. It started on a Monday and ended on a Thursday. That is crazy for a death penalty case. Yeah, I, I mean, know. How, how does that even happen? Oh, we have a passerby. Hey! We have an audience of two here <laughs> do, right we, now. That we more, have more might come. You never know. Yeah. And um, uh, it's it's really nice to know that our audience has doubled in size since it we has. started. I mean, think about it. It was zero. Now, now it's two. two. <laughs> I mean, if it keeps doubling, how much, Janie, <laughs> in your math class, can you figure out how quickly it could double to, say, 100,000 at this rate? Yeah. You can get back to me on that. Yeah, we won't put you on the spot. <laughs> um, but uh, the jurors, uh, they um, heard a lot of stuff during mm -hmm. this trial. And um, the uh, evidence is is uh, pretty compelling. And this is the whole premise of um, what is to come is all of this evidence and the way it is perceived by the prosecution and the defense and outside entities, entities, and um, but the prosecution had some some heavy weighted um, evidence and and just to interject, um, I have to make a plug for my uncle Mickey McLaughlin, who was the prosecutor on this case, as well as Tom Scott, a good friend of ours, who was special um, prosecutor and. Then the defense was um, led by Terry Jordan, who's also a friend. So that's who we have uh, the players. And the judge was um, Nick Curzon, and it was his first death penalty case. Yes, yes. And um, the prosecution, um, they had a, they had found two foreign hairs consistent with Coleman, and they had found those hairs um, on Wanda McCoy's body. And keep in mind, this is before DNA. Before DNA. Went well mm -hmm. before DNA yeah. ever came into play. And uh, so that's why they say consistent rather than matches, because mm -hmm. they didn't mm -hmm. have enough evidence to definitively say, or technology to definitively say, <coughs> right, it belongs to him. But the um, uh, testing that they were able to do was able to at least make it consistent. In the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder what the percentage of that is. You know, 
percentage of consistency. Uh, Jenny, will you Google that also, please? Yes. Or Siri over there. Siri. What? <laughs> Janie. I can't read from we don't have Siri. We have Janie. <laughs> and of course, they didn't have Siri back then. No, so, they didn't. You know. And so they also had a pair of jeans that she was wearing the night of the murder. Um, and um, I'm sorry, that he was wearing. Roger Coleman mm -hmm. had. Oh, this is something that you have always found so interesting. Is the jeans that Roger Coleman was wearing um, matched the water yes, height? Right. So, I, I mean, I guess he was walking through, waiting for the creek. Yeah, long bottom is well, it's a bottom because it runs along a waterway, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how you. The difference between you know a bottom and a holler right. and you know there's all these subtle differences but one of the reasons you know there's a bottom is because it's you know there's a waterway that runs through it and um the uh they thought that when he left the house that he waded up the creek and um the water was the same height on his jeans as the um the water stains were the same height on the <coughs> jeans as the water depth mm -hmm. in front of her home and then um, they also said that, um, you know, he had access to the house mm -hmm. and um, because there, there, there really wasn't much of a forced entry. Right. Or she let him in. Mm -hmm. that, right. you know, she obviously. Yeah, that she family. probably would not have let just mm -hmm. anyone in, that she would have um, probably right. known the person. Right. And I just want to, at this point, show a picture. Oh, I'm sorry. Just letting no, that's okay. Show a picture of Wanda because I don't know if we did last time. But. Um, we need to give her, her, you know, um, show everyone that she was a beautiful person, and um, you know, this gets this is, gets kind of um, gruesome she to talk of, about. She kind of she gets you know I think that sometimes just like we pointed out the last time about the women who survived, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the you know interactions with. Roger Coleman, the and the other, yeah. yes, and um, you know we called them true Appalachian heroines, mm -hmm. and of course Wanda Faye McCoy is is you know she's in she's that definitely the certainly main in that one. Yes, yes in that category, and um, but sometimes I think you know with all of this with him she she got lost mm -hmm. you know yeah, her for sure. you know I think that that it didn't. You know, yeah, I, I think that she kind of got lost, so um, we just wanted to make sure that <laughs> we play, paid proper respect to her. Yes. And then um, the they also brought up the fact that he had been a prior, he had already been convicted once of mm -hmm. you know the attempted rape, and um, they showed that the victim Wanda had defensive wounds like broken fingernails, cuts on her hands. Um, she had. Um, black soot on her body, mm. and um, that um, she also had wounds Gold on her dust. chest and her throat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the black soot is is a, a really big giveaway mm -hmm. because you know he of course worked in the mines. And, right. And um, she had um, she had uh, coal dust mm -hmm. on her, and then um, they presented the evidence about the wounds on her chest and her throat with a knife, and. Um, Initial and subsequent DNA testing connected Coleman to the crime scene, and so, like we were saying, DNA today is so much further. Right. Well, I don't even know if they had anything really back then. They had um, mitochondria DNA. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, you know, like when you pull your hair out mm -hmm. and you have that little. They were able to do some testing with that, mm -hmm. oh, but okay. but it still wasn't like that right 99 percent match yeah. that we have today but they, there was also a jailhouse informant involved oh. and um i don't really know about that part yeah but where so was he housed he was housed at the buchanan, uh, county. buchanan county jail and um or the grundy jail mm -hmm. and um he uh was he shared a cell with another man and um there's always informants like yeah. They should really learn to keep their mouths well, shut. Well, this in informant jail. was wait, was awaiting a sentencing on felony charges, mm -hmm. so um, he he went to the uh, Commonwealth and um, told them that uh, Roger Coleman had confessed to him, 
and that he had also told the story that there was another man involved mm. and that both men attacked and raped her. Mm. And um, Coleman even, he claimed that Coleman even sketched a, um, like he uh, sketched out the scene mm-hmm. oh my. for him. And um, that there, that the weapon that they used, uh, the knife that was used, had been discarded under, like a bridge. He had thrown the weapon under well, a bridge. Did he name the other person? Um, no, <coughs> he did not That's name the other person. And also, did they come out and say that this jailhouse um, snitch was trying to get a better deal for himself, or well, did he end up getting I a think, better deal for himself? Um, I think that was that was what the prosecution. Um, or what the uh, defense had stated was that he was in the right place at the right mm-hmm. time with the right person. Right. He was getting ready to, to face all these felony charges mm-hmm. and that he had some leverage right. that he could use. But uh, I don't think, I don't, yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. for certain. But, um, yeah. But he did testify in court, if I'm not mistaken, to what had happened oh. or the exchange between and the two of them. I think it's interesting that Roger Keith Coleman testified. You know, that doesn't often happen. I mean, uh, people always think if you put the defendant on the stand, it makes him look better because he, you know, of course, if you were innocent, you would want to get up there. But it opens them up to a lot of um, Well, I mean, you have to be really careful about what you say because right. you never know what they're going to bring up later. Yeah, exactly. So, um but I thought that was interesting. But just talking about the sketch of the house, Janie, could you bring us the house uh, photo, please? We have our assistant here today who is bringing us, um, this is the house where it all happened. So this is where he was sketching, he sketched the layout of the scene, I guess, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the house that, um, of course, was located in Long Bottom. Mm -hmm. And that- No longer there. No. Um, That- Wanda and Brad, they lived in. Mm. So I wonder when they tore it down or what the story for that was. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that it's not there. Which I, you can't blame them, really. No, whatever, no. You know? So, no. Um, so <coughs> what the defense? I'm never going to get rid of this cold. Oh, you've had this for weeks. I know. I know. It's just this weather. Um, so, uh, the defense says that even though, um, the prosecution states that there wasn't a forced entry, but the defense says that there was, there were pry marks on the door Mm -hmm. and, um, that that indicated that, you know, it was a more of a break in Mm -hmm. rather than a, Hey, come on in. Mm -hmm. in. And then, um, the, they did do, D, the, the limited DNA testing that they did do um, indicated that the uh, semen found within her body, there were two mm-hmm. different, mm-hmm. Um, you know, contributors mm-hmm. to that. And um, that... Which could have been the two attackers if he was right, or it could have been her husband and Rogers. And I think he testified that it was him. Mm-hmm. Um, and her husband that her, yeah, that it was right. that it was her husband um and uh because we have audience members here yes. today we're being very dis- very sensitive yes. we have we have to be g-rated <coughs> yes yes right now. we're 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 breaking it or down they're, they're rolling their eyes they think pg-13 is okay but or it sometimes is. they see r without my knowledge they rent r i mean you can just go rent it on tv you know yeah it's just um, not good i was never allowed to see r movies of any kind Anytime Tommy and Elizabeth wanted to see something that I wouldn't let them see, they would just yeah. go to their dad's oh, and watch so that's, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's such a and ploy, she, you know. And then she would, and then she would um, come. Elizabeth would come back and tell me like months later that, uh, oh, oh yeah, we've guess already what? seen it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's on American I mean, Pie. We're going. Oh god, <laughs> no, we're like, going what? back oh, and <laughs> watching movies. Um, we watch movies almost every night here. The other night, oh my daughter, we watched The Omen. Oh, and I know. Mark that's could not believe I had never seen I know, that. I can't either. And there's a whole host of movies I'd never seen because my mom, my sweet mom, wouldn't. She kept my eyes. I know. know. That was pure. That was smart. Yeah. One time on a snow day, and I'm, I'm glad my children are grown now, and we laugh about this, and I don't tell very many people, but now I'm getting ready to tell. I'm getting ready to confess. Oh, I'm getting gosh. ready to have a little oh, confession. So like one day, um, 
you know, have you ever gotten up and it was just a struggle and your your kids, I mean, they don't want to get up out of bed, they don't want to go to school and you're right. just exhausted yes. and you don't want to yeah. and they they don't have anything clean to wear. It's oh. just you know, oh, it's just one of those tragic. and it was cold and snowy and I was like, you know what? We're we're not we're not doing this. I'm not doing this yeah. today. We're not going to school. I'm not that I'm sounds not, I'm not doing it. I love and so it. then I was like, we're going to the movies. Oh, fun. Such <laughs> a good mom. No, I'm a terrible mom because we I took them to see American Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. Oh, great. I'm so glad that my kids are too old for social services to uh, come in and review them because oh I'm telling you, I got halfway through that I'm not even halfway through that movie and I was like Oh, no. <laughs> this is a really bad Maybe idea. Let's get our cherry coke and let's go. <laughs> and Tommy and Elizabeth were both. Was that like, the Lynn one? No, this was. Oh when, yeah, um, well of course not. Your kids were that's not. That's okay. In, I'm yeah. just and I thinking. took them to um, the Christiansburg Cinema. I there. thought you were going to no. say the Christian Cinema. The Christian <laughs> Cinema. We saw American Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like <laughs> NC-17, and I didn't even realize that. I don't that even think I do NC anymore. It's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm telling you, I look back on that, and I'm like, oh, gosh, if that story oh, wasn't so funny, I would be embarrassed. Funny. I mean, it's funny. And it is pretty funny. turned out really great, so, you Oh, know. yeah, yeah. Elizabeth went so, as Clarice Starling yeah. for Halloween. I mean, and that's, well, you know. It's okay. You know, whatever. <laughs> She's a little more Norito Olive, you know, just like the rest of us. So. Well, while we're on a kind of a funny subject, can I say something that happened while the trial was going on, yes. apparently, <laughs> who was the husband of Brenda, going back to the rape, apparently, this is what I read, that he had a sign that said, time for a new hanging in Grundy, and put it out Ooh. by the, um, and this was in like something public that I read, and put it near that cute little gas station yes. by the courthouse. Right. Well, um, I've always thought that was just such a cute, I think the Grundy Wrestling Club uses that now. Um, oh, do they? Little blue That's white. So cute. Yeah. Yes. Well, it is. My. Or they um, used to. I'm. I'm thinking this. My dad's history. law office was right across from there mm -hmm. years ago, and he. I guess he just had too much time on his hands, which he loved to make prank calls, and that was back in the day of full service. And so the guy, and the only one guy was working at the time, <laughs> so the guy would come out and he would start <laughs> filling the tank. And my dad would call. Oh my god! He'd sit there and he'd call the phone. And the guy would be like, "I'll be right back." He'd go answer the phone, and of course, my dad would hang up. And he's watching all this through his window, and he just kept doing it over and over until he like drove the guy mad, probably. Probably. Yeah. That that so, is hilarious because so. I can I I know the scene. I know exactly. Yeah. You know, yes. so to just visualize this, yeah. yeah. So that's great. That's what he did. But I just wanted to say that. Well, but I can't blame anybody for putting that kind of sign, though. You know, when you're mad, I mean. Um, well, I, I will be honest with you. I just do not know. You just don't know how you would react. Yeah. In the, in no, I hope I, I never have to find out. Right. But, you know, I just, I, I wouldn't discredit or discard or, no, you know, condemn anyone not. for anyone's behavior oh, either, in those yeah. kind of circumstances. I totally get it. But <coughs> so Personally, anyway, I mean, you know. But um, the uh, the the uh, defense said also that um, you know the impl you know the implication of another man and um, that they said that there was no struggle and that you know but the, even though the victim had cuts on her hands and her nails were broken that that wasn't that there wasn't really I'm, any sign of struggle I mean, that could be explained. The only How way I feel like that could, <laughs> really, I mean, the only, well, not, in my, my not in my world, <laughs> not in my house, you know, but the only, I feel like the only way that could be <laughs> explained would be to, yeah. um, that if they somehow subdued her really quickly, you know, like, choked her out or something that to where she's unconscious because who's not going to struggle with this? Well, that? I mean, you know, that's a dirty toilet if you've got cuts and bruises on your hands. I mean, I mean how hard are you to <laughs> <that come out? laughs> I'm like, think of, I've, I've seen, you know, I would just replace it. Yeah, if it's that right. dirty, I mean, come I've on. I've seen some of that on some of those TV shows. Ooh, Hoarders. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ugh, it's, yeah. Um, but I, I can't look away, though. I have to watch that. I know. I Our know neighbor really at the end, like, like, years ago, we had a neighbor that, um, she was a hoarder, and when she passed away, you know, she, she 
in here again when you were so oh, God. she was in our house for a while before <gasps> oh, anybody man. noticed oh my word that she was gone and that that when you know the rescue squad came in that there was just like a pathway through oh, her dear. house yeah and that, <laughs> and this is terrible <laughs> but speaking of toilets <laughs> but um her toilet had literally fallen through the floor <gasps> Oh my word! Yeah, I know. They said it was really oh, bad, that's really, just... really bad. I won't tell you what she did a... to use the bathroom. Oh, I but... can't imagine. Oh, no, she was oh. worth it. But oh, anyway, dear. okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's. I, I hope everyone's <laughs> done with their dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's four. Oh yeah, it's four well, o'clock. So I meant lunch by the, by lunch, dinner. I meant yeah. lunch. That's the southern way to say dinner. Lunch. That's right. Dinner. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. Get your yeah. dinner Come bucket, y'all. Let's go have lunch. And the next meal is supper. Supper. Just supper time. Right. That's what my yeah. grandparents used to always say. But. That's it, yeah, mm. I mean, and uh, um, I just always thought they were interchangeable. Yeah, I think they, they just, are. You know. Uh, so, they uh, also claimed, the defense also claimed that there was a documented um, alibi. With so, them. this timeline, um, the uh, defense states that um, Roger Coleman left work and when he found out that his shift had been canceled. But actually, I, that's how they worded it, that his shift mm -hmm. had been canceled. But I have a um, friend, um, and y'all gonna have to follow me here. Uh, my friend Summer, uh, her dad owned TJ and M Mines, it, which is the mine located at Looney's Creek mm -hmm. that Roger Coleman worked at. And because um, I was like, did he get did, did the shift get canceled? Mm -hmm. I'd always heard he'd been laid right. off. So Summer called her mom, Penny, and Penny told Summer that mm. he had actually been laid off that ah. night. And so, which so, would make him very upset. Yes. You know, he's okay. Well, I'm telling you, I feel like we have stopped and go and stopped and go. I know. It's well, okay. It's phone calls. It, it, it is. We always get phone calls. We do. And We're old there's school. this one night. And I know we do. We still no. talk on the phone. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. That's one of those things like letter writing that people yeah, don't do anymore. Millennials probably don't even know. Well, I'm sure they don't know what the rotary dial is. Well, next but week we're going to have one. Yeah, we'll get it. We're going to do a tutorial on how to use a rotary phone. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so anyway, back to the timeline. So we found out that um, Roger Coleman had been laid off. And um, so he thought he would just go and hang out and see what was going on and he left work and he stopped to um, and he, when he left he left at Looney's Creek which is um, down below town uh, for all of y'all who mm -hmm. uh, don't know where Looney's Creek is I know now I'm sure you know exactly yeah. where it is yes. it's down below town if and you don't know go visit it yeah go visit it google it google earth <laughs> <laughs> google earth it <laughs> I mean, come on, Looney's Creek. Uh, and so then, uh, so he left work, and he, when he left Looney's Creek, he had been talking to a coworker by the name of Philip Van Dyke. And so um, he left there and went to Scott and Sandra Stiltner's house, um, which was uh, located um, up Slate Creek, which you're talking about Looney's Creek, Grundy, going it's by Wanda McCoy, going by Longbottom, and then hitting Slate Creek, yeah. and um, you know that's quite a distance. He went to borrow a cassette tape, a Super Tramp eight oh. track, oh, eight track. Yes. I'm sorry, I yes. said cassette. Yes. Of course, eight track. I yes, mean. he he went to it went to get yeah a Super Tramp oh. eight track. Cool. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, it may have been located at Boyd's Trailer Park. I think it was. Yes, that I what? remember. Yeah. yeah. I, if I'm not mistaken. And so then he left there. And so he left Slate Creek, went by Longbottom, and went back to Grundy. And now, for those of you who um, are familiar with Grundy before it was not Grundy the downtown anymore. area yes. was destroyed. Um, there used to be a bathhouse underneath a barber shop, and this um, bathhouse was located 
where the wave man is. Mm -hmm. Remember where the mm -hmm. wave man was yes. painted on the cliff yeah. there? Okay. So there was Casual Corner, and then there was a little beauty shop, and then yes. there was the barber shop. And, and there was, was a underneath. set of steps yeah. that you could go down that little set of steps into that bathhouse. I can't Jenkins. either. And the only reason why I know that is because of this. Right, yeah. Um, Where the miners would go and wash and, off and wash this. up. Uh, and it was open 24 hours a day and you could just go down there and you could get cleaned up and then you could go home. And um, and they describe it as a public bathhouse. Mm -hmm. And so um, he went there and he took a shower and he changed his into clean clothes. And so Van Dyke, the guy he was talking to when he left work there at Looney's Creek, he um, corroborated this story and he said that he had left um, Looney's Creek at like 10.30. Mm -hmm. And um, Stiltner, uh, the, where he went to get the Supertramp tape, uh, testified that he had come and gone uh, from, his home, from her home um, about 10.20. Because they were watching a show. Yeah, they were watching a, a, a show. Heart to Heart, I think. Is that what it was? I feel like it was oh, Heart to Heart. Oh my gosh, that's great. That was a great show. Yeah, it was. And um, uh, that's another... Okay, like my brain is spiraling. Yeah. Because, you know, wasn't Heart to Heart? Didn't they have Robert Wagner? Yes, and Natalie Wood. And Natalie Wood and his wife. Yes. And she... Yeah. That so, saga just goes on and on. That does. It's never that ending. does. And yeah. Christopher Walken was there. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. It was. It really was. Um... That's another one. It is. But that didn't happen in Appalachia. Yeah. So. No, but we watched, so. we can watch it from Appalachia on TV. We can, yeah. we can. And we could definitely buy that National Enquirer. Right. It's still got yes. that crap on there. Inquiring so. minds want to know. I do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I can't still, help I can't it. Either. I'm just nosy that way. too. So, um, if he left their house at 1020, like she says they did, that would leave him like a 45 minute window. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was what, that was his alibi. It was, you know, um, this testimony uh, of people who had seen him. Is a long time ago. Uh, it's a really long time. You could go down and back and back and it, again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, get the rest of my notes. Um, like we said, the trial lasted from Monday to Thursday. Uh, on Thursday, the jurors took three hours and 30 minutes to find Roger Coleman guilty. That's like, has to be some kind of record. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I mean, that was... You know when they call back in three hours and whatever, and that's they're bad. saying, like, we have a verdict, they're like, oh, I've watched enough oh, law well, in order sorry. to know that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you want them out for... You, you, want them, you want them out for days. Yeah, you weeks want them, yeah. even. Yeah, I want them to come back and right. ask for... Ask questions. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we look at good. this? You know, can we read right. the transcript? You know, can you interpret that? Yeah. You know, three hours is... That's not even almost time for them to go have lunch, dinner, come back, you know? I know. It, I mean, it really... Yeah, so anyway. Um, they came back the next day. And um, they had decided on the death penalty... And so, uh, the judge, Nick, uh, Persin, I always get that wrong. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. Um, <coughs> he stated that he had never sentenced anyone to death and that, um, he hated it and that he had to, um, he, he knew he had to do it, but it, it really bothered him. It had bothered him so much that he couldn't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he believed that the verdict and the penalty, mm -hmm. that it was correct and he, he did agree with it, uh, even That's though it did bother him. a good judge to uphold that, mm -hmm. even though your feelings yeah. are not the same. And so, um, uh, at the sentencing, Roger Coleman um, stated that he did not um, much care if he lived or died. His wife had filed for divorce. Uh, last night, when the verdict came back in, I pretty much lost the only thing that ever meant anything to me. My freedom, my life, my wife whom I love very much. At this point, the death penalty or life, it doesn't matter. It's up to the Lord now anyway. Mm. Those were his last words. And I might add, he was offered a plea deal and he didn't accept it. That was in the book I read, but I oh, didn't really? specify what that plea deal was. So, um, yeah. I think that's a good cliffhanger. It had to have been, been life. Yeah, right. 
I think because it, it wouldn't be like okay, ten years. And then yeah, stop. I mean, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, but um, that is a pretty good place yes. to stop. The only the only thing that um, uh, I wanted to add to that was that so so at sentencing, you know, he said that he didn't care if he lived or if he died, mm -hmm. and so he did get the death penalty so he was sent to prison and he was um on death row and once he got there he changed his mind a lot of things changed mm -hmm. a lot of cha a lot of things changed so what, do you ever feel like do you ever worry that by talking about murder and things it makes us more susceptible to being involved in crimes not us committing crimes but like i'm really superstitious like Oh, don't tempt fate, that kind of yeah. thing. You know, speak of the devil and, and he walks. Well, I'm just, I'm a scaredy cat. I like to keep all my doors That's locked. That's because your mom wouldn't let you watch rated R movies. I know, when you're I know, it's all coming back. <laughs> figured it out now. Yes, that's exactly what it is. I know. Well, no, everyone have kidding. a happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. And, and if we'll you travel, be safe. Yeah. And um, we'll see you after Thanksgiving. Yeah. This Saturday. All my family and friends that I'm not going to be with, I hope oh. that, um, you know, you have a good Thanksgiving. That's Miss so you guys. Sweet.